People say that getting into medical school is all about luck, but I'm here to tell you that it's not. I'm Ruchel, a first year medical student here at the University of Toronto, and I'm going to explain to you how I would get into medical school if I was back in my first year at university. Yes, luck is definitely a factor. However, at least in Canada, you can pretty much guarantee an interview invite at certain schools. The problems most people face is that they get a bad mark early on, which ruins their GPA, or they perform poorly on the car section of the MCAT, which disqualifies them from most schools. But what if I told you that there was a way to maximize your chances of getting into medical school? Well, this video will act as a free guide for this. So buckle up, take notes, because we're gonna give you everything you need to know. I'm not a mind reader, but I know exactly what you guys are thinking right now. How can you guarantee medical school invites? These guys don't know what they're talking about. Let me demonstrate. So for McMaster's interview criteria, they clearly state that the only things they look at are the car section, your GPA, and your Casper score. Therefore, if you have the stats, you will get an interview. And after you get that interview, your chances of getting into medical school are 40%. That means that the hardest part is getting that interview. And after that, it's dependent on how much interview prep you do. But the question still remains, how do you optimize your chances of getting that interview during university? There are five aspects you need to focus on. Each one will contribute to your admission to medical school. So let's say you're in first year. What do you start with? The answer is your GPA. If you tank your GPA, you might as well flush your medical school dreams down the drain. Average GPA for admission into Canadian medical schools is extremely high, in some cases even higher than Harvard and Yale. For some individuals, the transition between high school and university is extremely tough. So in those first four months of university, don't bother with trying to take on additional tasks, just focus on getting adjusted and studying for your exams. You need to maintain as close to a 4.0 as you can. Now I know this is much easier said than done, which is why we're going to explain to you exactly how to do this. Firstly, make sure you do those small assignments. Yeah, I'm talking about those assignments that cost you 1%. Your laziness might end up costing you that 90. Next, ask your TAs and professors exactly what they want from that assignment. You need to make sure that what you understand from the assignment is exactly what they want as well. A strategy I've used over and over again is actually one I've learned from Kawhi Leonard, load management. Basically, work really, really hard at the start of the semester. Do all of your hard work in the start so that you have some leniency at the end of the semester, which means you can afford to lose some marks. Is this the dagger? <laughs> on the other hand, let's say you lose marks early on. Then you have to make up for them the entire semester and the stress builds up, which is just going to make your marks even worse. After your first semester of university is over and you've settled in, the next important aspect of your application to focus on is extracurriculars. We've just talked about how important your GPA is, but in reality, this just gets your foot in the door. Your extracurriculars is what actually gets your file review up to bat for you. This is why you need to start early. One big disclaimer I have for you is that you shouldn't start extracurriculars simply for the sake of getting into medical school. Look at things that you're passionate about. This will genuinely pay off for you in the long run. This is exactly what we did in our first year. We wanted to help homeless individuals back in high school, but we never got the support we needed, which meant that we wanted to make it happen in university, which is why in our first year, we started Blankets for Teal. This organization was our own and we were so passionate about it, which was shown in the numbers, because till date, we've donated over 9,000 items and helped over 2,000 individuals across Toronto. This is the difference between something you love versus something you only did for the sake of medical school. Your interviewers will see the difference when the time comes. We also didn't just work on blankets for Teal in our undergrad. We also joined a variety of other things we found interesting. The point is to start early so you can fill out the 32 entries you have to fill out on your ABS. Let's move on to the third aspect of admissions we'd like to talk about, and that is the infamous car section. Nine out of 10 people that I've talked to that have had to rewrite the MCAT, they had to rewrite it because of the car section. The car section is unfortunately one of the hardest sections to improve on because you actually have to use a lot of critical thinking and reading comprehension. And this isn't just about spamming Anki or reading hundreds of pages of textbooks. This is why you need to think about this section in advance. And that is why you should start implementing the strategies we are about to tell you as soon as you can. Number one, 
Make reading a hobby of yours, starting first year. Being able to read fast and make connections is probably the most important thing that you'll need when you're studying for the MCAT. So if you make this a hobby and start reading regularly, this will help you immensely when you're preparing. Start and pick up any books related to fiction, nonfiction, news articles, scientific journals, pretty much anything that interests you. This will build that skill early and save you from so much suffering. Let's move on to number two. Practice three cars passages a day for six months before your MCAT date. If you can even start a year before, trust me, it seems like overkill, but it's not. It's worth the effort. I was lucky enough to only have to write the MCAT once, and I would have given anything to not write it again. A quick note about when you should take the MCAT. We get so many questions about when exactly you should take the MCAT, and our official answer is the summer of second year. That way, you're eligible to all medical schools if you do well. And if you don't do well, you can always just retake it in the summer leading up to your fourth year. This way, the chances you're in a situation where you have to take the gap year simply because you have to rewrite the MCAT are significantly lower. Moving on to research. Yes, yes, I get it. Research is not required. Publications are not required. You can get into medical school without any research experience. That is all true. But think about it. Will research help you get in? Will a publication increase your chances of getting into medical school? Certainly. Which is why we recommend that you at least get a few research positions and maybe a publication if possible. Research is tricky. Some PIs don't like to have undergrads on their papers, but being honest with them really helps. Tell them you aspire to go to medical school and you'd like to be on a project that might lead to a publication. You definitely want to back this up with great work ethic and being diligent in the lab. Something I've personally heard from profs is that they love students who can get stuff done. Therefore, don't hesitate to show off about projects you've completed in the past, especially if they're related to research or anything else. One thing to note is that you should check the professor's PubMed or Google Scholar before you reach out to them. This is because some professors publish upwards of 20 times per year, whereas others may only publish once every few years. Also, when you're looking for research, do something that you're passionate about because a lot of the work you'll be doing is quite monotonous. If you're doing some research that you don't necessarily enjoy the topic of, you may be unhappy. To secure the research position, cold email as many professors as you can, and I cannot stress this enough. There are also grant opportunities that you can apply to, which can help you secure that research position. Because if you go in with funding already secured, they're more likely to take you on as a research assistant. In my first year of undergrad, I myself cold emailed over 50 professors when I was looking for a research position. Out of the 50, only 10 got back to me. And out of the 10, only two took me on. And those two are still my references to this day. The last aspect we want you to focus on is to form connections. The medical school process is extremely hard and there are so many hidden facts that you just simply wouldn't know if you didn't talk to someone who was already in medical school. Therefore, start forming these connections early on. So, how can you do this? Well, our answer is that if you join a club run by medical students or if you attend a conference, you're bound to interact with them quite a lot. For example, in my second year of undergrad, I joined an organization called COVID-19 Made Simple, which was run by four medical students at the time. Through this opportunity, I was able to get access to many medical students that helped me get into medical school and that are my mentors and friends to this day. Here are some of the conversations we've had with them. Now that we've discussed all the tenets of getting into medical school, here's what your timeline would look like. You start off your first year and for the first four months, you'll be building a strong work ethic and strong studying habits, and you'll be scoring highly in school. For the next four months, you'll be reaching out to professors and hopefully joining clubs or other initiatives that you might be passionate about. Maybe you take up reading as a hobby if you haven't already. In the summer of your first year, you might be in your research position that you work diligently towards, but make sure you enjoy your vacation too. In second year, you either continue the same research or you take up a new position. To readjust back to school, you spend the first few months studying away, hold up at your desk. After that, perhaps you join a few more clubs or you take on initiatives and hobbies that are in line with your character. You're planning to take your MCAT in the following summer, so you start doing CARS passages six months before. You might have followed our tips and found that your scores are actually pretty good compared to others. You start studying in May and take your MCAT at the end of summer, and you scored very well. 
This makes you eligible to apply for every medical school. You spend the next couple of months working on your application and prepping for Casper, and because you plan your courses in such a way, they go really well and you're able to dedicate a lot of time to them. Lo and behold, in January, you receive not just one, but maybe multiple interview invites. Alongside balancing school and extracurriculars, you interview prep over the course of those next couple of months, and finally, acceptance day arrives. And on that fateful day, you receive that email containing your acceptance. However, this is obviously assuming that everything went perfectly. If your MCAT doesn't go well, or maybe you didn't get accepted after your interviews, you always have fourth year to repeat the process. All in all, you need to focus on five things when you're in your undergrad. GPA, extracurriculars, research, MCAT cars, and connections. If you start on all of these things early, you're going to have a stellar application that will essentially guarantee admission into medical school. There will be ups and downs in this journey, but you have to keep going and just persevere through them. Did you like this video? If you did, check out Nimitz Journey to Medical School right here. And if you're interested in learning how I prep for undergrad exams, you can find out right here.